What is going on everybody? Welcome to episode two or video two, whatever you want to call it, of the Do You Want to Be an SRE series. My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And this session is going to be on Linux Essentials. Now, I know what you might be thinking, you know, what does Linux have to do with this? Uh, what does operating systems have to do with this? Well, here's the thing. Remember in the first episode, we talked about that SRE, just as a whole, the definition is thinking about infrastructure from a software developer standpoint okay and because of that a lot of like what you're doing in general is going to be operating system infrastructure related because wherever you're hosting those applications whether it's on an ec2 instance in aws virtual machine in azure uh, bare metal or, or a virtualized environment like esxi or hyper-v whether it's a container whether it's serverless you're going to be scaling out some system you're going to be working with some type of operating system you know even when you're thinking of a docker container there's an operating system very very watered down very very minimal just enough of what's needed but it's on there like there's an operating system on there so what i want to talk about is linux essential so we're going to go through you know getting into the command line uh you know sshing into a server running a few commands seeing all of it and breaking it down so with that let's go ahead and jump right into the hands-on goodness again thank you everybody so much for joining me really do appreciate it and i hope that you enjoy this episode now before jumping into the, the terminal i want to just show you something really quick i'm going to type linux distributions okay and then i want to hit enter so as you can see there are several different types of linux distributions now, a few of the popular ones that you'll probably use from an enterprise standpoint are Linux distributions based on Red Hat and Aptitude. Now, when I say Aptitude, that's the Aptitude Package Manager, okay? So like Ubuntu, for example, is in there. Now, when I'm talking about like Red Hat style distributions, you're thinking about things like literally the Red Hat distribution or other distributions like Fedora. Now, one of my favorite is Elementary OS. I believe I already mentioned this in this video, or maybe I'm going to mention it later on. But Elementary OS is really, really cool for a Linux desktop distribution. So if I type in Elementary OS and I go here, now notice it looks really cool. Like, you know, you don't have to pay anything. Like, you could put zero if you need to, and then you can download, or you can contribute to the cause and you know pay whatever dollar amount you can but as you can see from the screen here it actually looks like pretty good i, I honestly love it uh it looks kind of like osx kind of sort of but point is is that you know this elementary os is based off of aptitude so when you're inside of a terminal and you're using apt commands to install things on you know ubuntu for example you're going to use those same commands to run on elementary os and the reason why is because it uses the same package manager so like red hat and fedora use the yum package manager aptitude distros like elementary os and ubuntu use the aptitude package manager or when you're on the terminal it's apt for short so what i highly recommend is if you have like a decent machine that you could run a virtual machine on or even if you have like another laptop laying around and you want to install linux on it I highly recommend elementary OS that way you have a UI if you need it like for a web browser and stuff but the terminal is the same so like if you're using just Ubuntu server and there's no UI or no GUI versus if you're using like elementary OS and you use the terminal in elementary OS the commands and everything are the same the only difference is one has a GUI one doesn't all right everybody so first things first when you're thinking about Linux nine times out of ten like from a systems administration standpoint from an engineering standpoint you're thinking about how to get into it through the terminal now there are some really really cool operating systems for your desktop for linux like ubuntu desktop is really cool my personal favorite whenever i kind of switch back and forth like i'm on a mac right now but when i used to be on windows i used to dual boot windows and linux and i would always use elementary os that's definitely one of my favorite ones so if you want to dive in and just kind of you know play around with linux in a day-to-day -day, using something like the ubuntu desktop or elementary os is going to be awesome so in the beginning when you want to hit a linux box you know that's what we <laughs> that's what us engineers kind of call it hit a box you know if you want to ssh into a box you're going to be using ssh 
Now, the SSH protocol is over port 22, and that's what allows you to make a connection from your local host to a Linux server. Now, kind of think about this like RDP almost, except you're doing it through command line, through commands, through the terminal versus through a UI or through a GUI. Okay, so as you can see here, this IP address is a Ubuntu server actually running inside of Azure. Okay, and then I have my username here, which is Mike. So essentially what this is saying is, it's saying SSH into 20.121.138.227 with the username Mike. Again, think about from an RDP standpoint. Okay, when you go to RDP into a Windows server, you have to put in a username and a password. I'm putting in the username here and the host. Now I'm gonna get prompted for my password. The biggest difference here is I actually set up a password on this server for the username Mike. If you don't have a password set up, nine times out of 10 I would say, you're using an SSH key. And then SSH key essentially has a private key on your host, on your current host, your local host, and then a public IP on the external host where you're connecting to. Actually, before we even SSH in here, let me show you what this kind of looks like, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna type SSH keygen and enter. Okay, so it's asking me the name. So enter file in which to save the key. I'm gonna name this SRE test, okay? And now notice most SSH keys fall under your home directory in a hidden directory called .ssh. I'm gonna hit enter. Now you could type in a passphrase. So if you want to use this SSH key, you could type in a passphrase and then you'll be prompted for that. It's, it's almost like password protected, right? Okay. So as we can see here, the, this is the key fingerprint, the SHA-256 that encryption key. Okay. And then the RSA here. Okay. So now I'm going to type LS, which is list all of the current directories in, and files in where you are currently in the current directory. Okay. So Keep in mind here, the commands that I'm running, I'm running them via bash, okay? So bash is what you use to interact with Linux. It's also like a command line utility and a language, like a programming language. You can write bash scripts or bash commands. Now, a lot of people use it from a automation standpoint, but you could actually use bash as like a fully fledged programming language. Like there's for loops, there's if statements, there's functions. It is a fully functional programming language. So the commands that we're running here, we're using bash. So ls to list all the directories in the files, that's bash. Now notice here, I have an SRE test and an SRE test dot pub. Okay. So if I cat SRE test, this is my private key. This is the key that stays on my local host and is connected to the public key. Now, when I say connected, what I mean is if I take this public key and I put it on a server, and then I go to authenticate to that server from my local host where the private key exists, that's gonna be my authentication protocol. Okay, so this is my private key. And then if I cat sre.pub, this is my public key, okay? So this is a key that's okay sharing if you need to, but never share your private key. This public key, for example, is, you know, maybe you have a bunch of servers and you need to be able to access them via SSH. This public key is what's gonna go on those servers. Okay, so now let's actually SSH into our server. All right, I'm gonna type in my password. Okay, and now I am officially SSH'd into my server. Now notice here, I have my username, and then the host name. So I'm actually doing a little something here for a Jenkins course that's gonna be over on Code Cloud. Make sure that you don't miss that. But this is the server that I'm using just to show everybody what's kind of happening. So when I first SSH into my Linux host, I get this message here, and this is just like a welcome message almost, and it tells me things like my system load, usage of my hard disk, memory usage, swap usage, process usage, my private IP address, okay? So it shows a bunch of really cool stuff here. So 
first command that you should learn on Linux is clear. Now clear clears the terminal, clears your screen, it cleans it up. So clear. Okay. So that's how you kind of just get rid of everything. Next, we already know the ls command. So if I type ls, notice how I have nothing in this current directory. Now, what if I want to change directories to see other files that are in different directories? Well, I can type cd space and then the directory name. Now cd stands for change directory. So now let's say I do slash and I type enter. Okay. Now notice something. It changed from the squiggly to the forward slash. The squiggly is an alias to the currently logged in user. So in our case, the currently logged in user is Mike. The slash here means root, the root directory of where everything exists on your computer. You can kind of think about it like the C drive on Windows. So if I type ls now, we can see these are all of the root directories on Linux. Okay, so now I'm going to cd back into my home directory. And if I type ls again, notice how there's nothing here again, because I changed directories back to the home directory from Mike. I'm going to type clear here. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new directory. So to create a new directory, I'm going to type mkdir. That stands for make directory. And then I'm going to call this directory test. Now I'm going to run ls. Now notice that I have my test directory. So I'm going to cd into test. And now I'm in my test directory. But how can I actually confirm the path of where I am currently? Well, to do that, you type pwd. That stands for print working directory. I'm going to type enter here. And now notice my fully qualified path is slash home slash Mike slash test. Now, what if I want to create something inside of test? Well, what I could do is I can type touch file name. So touch means you're going to create a file. I'm going to hit enter. And now we have file name. So what if you want to actually write some stuff to that file? Well, what you could do is you could type V I M. Now Vim, if you've ever heard of it, is a text editor for Linux. Now there's some other ones like VI you can use. There's some other ones like Nano, but I would say a lot of the old school folks love Vim and that's kind of what, you know, they typically go with. And that's typically what I go with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type F I. Now one of the cool things in Linux is auto completion. So if I type F I and I hit tab, it's going to auto complete my entry for me. And then I'm going to hit enter. So at this point I am in my file using Vim. And if I type I, that means insert. So I'm ready to type something out and I can say, hello, YouTube. Okay. So if I hit escape, that means I'm no longer inserting. So I can't type anymore. And now to save this, I type colon, WQ, which W stands for write, Q means for quit. And then I like to type an exclamation mark, which means immediately. I hit enter here. Okay, so now I edited my file. Now what I can do is I can use cat. And remember what cat is used for, we used it to look at SSH keys. It means to read a file. So if I type FI, tab, enter, I can now read that my file name says, hello, YouTube. Now we've been recording for almost 15 minutes or so. Well, actually like 13 minutes. And what I want to say is this obviously is like 1% <laughs> of Linux. I mean, there is so much about it and so much in it that it's definitely hard to, you know, go through it through an entire video. Uh, it, it should literally be its own course. Like maybe I'll do that at some point in the future, you know, beginners, uh, beginner Linux course or something like that. But the point of this video is, I wanted to kind of show you how to navigate through a Linux terminal because at the end of the day, it's definitely going to help you. Like if you have to navigate through a Docker container, 
if you have to create a Docker container, you know, a Docker file, for example, and we're going to go through, you know, containerization and stuff in this course, but a Docker file, when you're creating it, like you're actually setting it up with slashes and file names and you're using MKDIR if you need to create a directory for your container. So a lot of them, you know, are Linux based. Now there are Windows containers, but to be honest with you, like nobody really uses them all that much unless you have like a specific .NET application that can't run on .NET Core that you have to run on that container. That's typically about it. So with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up for today. What I would like to ask is if you need more Linux training and this video was like helpful for you to kind of get started, then please reach out to me and let me know. That way I can kind of gauge like do people want more Linux and, you know, Linux essentials courses and this, that, the next thing. So I do think that it's beneficial and helpful. So thank you very much, everybody. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let's go ahead and make this course viral together. That way, if it helped you, we can get it to help others. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.